Welcome back, Run fans. In today's video, I'm going to prove once and for all that the Paloma is more suited to rum than tequila. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to show you uh, the traditional way of making a Paloma, but obviously with rum and not tequila. Uh, kind of like the recipe that goes way, way back in time. Uh, then got four, four other kind of... Uh, instant palomas if you like to call them that sort of cheap palomas and kind of pick which one is my favorite in there and then i'm going to deep dive with 12 different rums to kind of loosely sort of categorize or represent the other rums in their categories as well 12 different rums to see which rum makes the best paloma in my opinion and actually which way for you guys at home to make the best paloma as well should you go traditional or should you go uh, cheats mode. Now just quickly before I dive in, I love the feedback. You guys make this community. So what I want to know from you, help the rest of the community out because as I keep saying, everyone's got a different palette, all right? Everyone's got a different palette. So what I want from you guys, have you ever made a Paloma with rum? If so, let me know in the comments below. Let me know the rum that you've used and let me know the method because I know full well some of you are thinking ting through and through. Let's not faff around with grapefruit juice or anything. Let's use ting. But I know some of you will also use the grapefruit juice, the soda, the agave and all that. So dive in the comments below. Let me know what rum is your go-to for a Paloma if you've ever done it and your recipe for making a Paloma. Right, so let's just go into um, making the Paloma. Now you, you'll see, I'm going to do one and you would kind of do the tequila version traditionally, traditionally. But as you'll see here, we've got four easy hacks as well. So I'm going to do a little side by side with them afterwards as well. But the Paloma, you'll notice for the rum, in my head, I am thinking uh, out and out Jamaican rum. It's, that's how I think that this is going to play out. I don't know. It might be the Clarin. I might prefer it with something else. I, I'm not sure. We're going to have a little test. So basically what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make up a, a traditional Paloma and then make up... Um, easy Palomas, just to see whether the easy Palomas can actually compete with the traditional Palomas. So, uh, for this recipe, pretty simple. I'm going to go UK for this. So, 50 mil double bubble of, as I say, I, I think Jamaica, I think this cocktail is crying out for Jamaica or maybe Claren, but we shall see. So, I've got that. Uh, lime juice, not too much at all. 10 mil of freshly squeezed lime juice in there. Uh, you'll notice I've got the grapefruit. I've actually got look, white grapefruit there and pink grapefruit. But just for ease, I've got the, um, what do you call it? Squeezed. It's 100% squeezed grapefruit juice. So I'm going, uh, I matched the rum for this. I'm going 50 ml of freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. And then just a pinch of agave. Again, 10 ml might be too much. Um, I'm going just under, I'm going seven and a half ml of agave. Uh, and that's that from morning. So what I'm just gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna shake this up and then serve it and then we'll top it up with, um, with some soda water. Right, now I have to confess as well, I've got major issues at the moment. I put, when I was filming for drink stuff, something happened there. I think it's a tendon gone down there. So I can't actually shake a cocktail properly at the moment. I can't really bend that. So uh, this is the best I could do with one hand down there. Uh, soda water. I've got my soda siphon. I'm not going to measure this out, but roughly 50, 75 mil. That's all you want in there. So let's just do it very carefully. Perfect. And then I'm just going to strain this. I've got a glass chilling down here. Just going to strain this up into a highball glass. And this would be your traditional Paloma. And then just the garnish, you could wedge into that. I'm going to keep those grapefruits for something else. But I've got dehydrated uh, grapefruit there. Let's, let's sort that out. We'll do a thumbnail for that. So that is the traditional, uh, as you would, Paloma, obviously traditional is going to be with tequila, but what's this taste like? That's fantastic. Jamaican rum. I'm not actually convinced that's the best. I think I think this cocktail is going to get so much better, but that is a fantastic cocktail. Absolutely adore that. That I mean, to go from a tequila cocktail to a rum cocktail, that's delicious. I'm at a time in my life where I can't handle too much sugar at the moment in my drinks or too much fizzy stuff. But I do still really love those sort of fun and fruity drinks. But 
I'm also a bit lazy. I don't like making cocktails, so I really do love a rum highball. So over the last couple of years, I've had to really search out alternative mixers because my old favorite stuff just literally gives me too much gas. So I was really happy last year in 2021 where I stumbled across these guys, Stratford Sodas. There's currently four in the range without none of them compromising taste. They are low in sugar. They are low in carbonation, but they use real fruit juice in there to give it that lovely flavor. The four in the range at the moment, we've got the spiced, which is cinnamon and ginger. We've got the citrus, which I call a long daiquiri. It's absolutely banging. We've got the hedgerow, uh, which is kind of like your hedgerow berries. We've got the blackcurrant juice in there, but uh, blackberry and rose flavors, which is lovely and delicious as well. But then we've got the tropical down there. Who doesn't love a bit of pineapple and coconut in the life? Now I fell in love with these when I first tasted them. And even to this day, a year later, I still can't decide which is my favorite. Today, while I'm filming this, as you can see, I've got the tropical here of pineapple and coconut. I've just paired it with one of my favorite white rums at the moment, a Huli. But you know, you could go coconut rum, you could go spiced rum, you could go flavored rum. Any kind of rum will work with that. It's just simply delicious. Now, if you want to try these little beauties out, we are giving you 50% off your first order of taster packs or party packs. There's a link in the description below. That will also populate on checkout. So just click that link and go shopping. I promise you, once you try them, you won't regret it. Right, back to the video. Well then, before we get into the rums, I'm deep diving down there, which rum makes the best Paloma. Uh, is, is, I wanted to do which, which way makes the best Paloma, if that's the right, which method makes the best Paloma. Now, this is fantastic. The whole point of these are easy Palomas. I'm not trying to replicate all the complexity. If I want the complexity with that, I'm just going to make it like that. So I'm talking about the agave, I'm talking about the lime juice, I'm talking about grapefruit juice, okay? These should be rum and mixer or rum, syrup, puree, soda. Easy as. So coming down the line, look, Ting is a benchmark. Ting is pretty nice. Uh, if I'm comparing the two, you know, that's an 8 out of 10. That's a 7 out of 10. It just lacks a little bit of grapefruitiness for me. That's the whole sort of thing with the Paloma. It's that grapefruit. It's lovely. It's been a benchmark for years and years and years. It's lovely. The Fever Tree, I, I've got a sneaky suspicion why I'm not enjoying this too much. It's lovely flavour. I wouldn't say it's naturally authentic in grapefruit flavour, but it is lovely flavour. I'm thinking, even though it doesn't say it on there, I'm naturally assuming that's made along the refreshingly light range. And I'm thinking if I added 5ml of agave to that, that would be delicious. And actually what I might do is do that. But there, there is a winner here by a long way. So a little bit of agave in there. Does that bump it up in taste? Yeah, it is instantly better. It just needs that little hint of sweetener, sugar. And I'll be honest, the agave in that is amazing. It, now that is better than the ting. In there. And I think, should I add? I'm just, I'll do it. Should I have agave to the ting? There we go. Right, let's do that. I prefer the fever tree. Prefer the, with agave, prefer the fever tree. Um, without the agave, prefer the ting. Um, that is pretty good replacement for that. So basically what I'm saying so far, the ting, no, not a replacement for that. That is a replacement for that, but you need to add agave nectar to that. Right, here we go. Monin, I mean the colour, the colour's quite funny, but you love fibric drinks, don't you? This is Monin's uh, grapefruit syrup. All that is, is Jamaican rum, that, soda water. That's flipping delicious. Hands down, better than those two. And yes, I would drink that over that. That's what I'm going for. But the pinnacle, and you have to do, the one thing I noticed, I tried to pour this into there. I did have to sort of take it out and sort of try and shake it with a dodgy arm because of the bits in there. But flavor-wise, again, rum, 
the puree and soda water, that wins hands down. That is just stunning flavor. Great fruitiness comes out in it. The soda's there, the rum's there. For me, that is the benchmark. That is the pinnacle. That's the one I'm kind of for. If you want to do, a, a, I've got to say pina colada, is it? What if it, it's a Paloma in it? If you want to do Palomas, the easy way, rum, something, and uh, soda, that is belting. Hands down, better than all those. Most authentic in grapefruit flavor without going down that route. But easy, rum, that, boom, jobs are good. Right, that's what I'm going to use. Now we're going for the rum test. Which rum is better? Right, experiment time. I flipping well love doing these experiments. So uh, all, all I've done is measured out uh, the puree in there and I've very gently, very slowly flash blended it to mix it because I can't shake. Because I'm a bit injured. I'm a bit old, you know. That's what it is. But now... In my head, I kind of thought exactly where this was going. Um, and I thought I'd throw in a few here that I would absolutely hate. And I didn't. <laughs> but uh, the winner is not... There is, an, a, there is a standout for me here. Absolute standout. Um, but all of these are delicious. So the whole point of this, I kind of wanted to narrow it down to a style of rum that a Paloma suits best. I think I can give you a definitive answer to that. But I would not discount any of the ones that I'm, I'm throwing away here. And this is a really fascinating experiment. It's grapefruit. I love grapefruit daiquiris, for a start. And here's, here's some, while well, this hadn't even con, uh, sort of come into my head, but there's a reason why I haven't done plantation pineapple in here and I haven't done the cane rock because I know full well from doing those as daiquiris, they're going to work. It's grapefruit daiquiris. I've done pineapple and grapefruit daiquiri. It's basically what I'm saying, and it's phenomenal. So I know they're going to kind of work, the flavoured rums in there. I'm not sure about spiced rums. Um, I don't think spiced rums would be suited to this, like out-and-out -out spiced rums, but different flavoured spiced rums, uh, yeah, probably. But I, I know full well for the, the, the cane rock with that coconut vibe in there as well is going to work. That's a very different type of spiced rum. I'm talking your rum bullion, your chairman's reserve, your pusses, um, gunpowder proof spiced your black tea is probably not necessarily those kind of spiced rums for this cocktail so moving on now which one shall i eliminate first uh, right okay here, here we go in my head i'm thinking this is jamaican this is potentially clarin that's where that that's the head-to-head -head gonna be i'm sort of right sort of right but the ones i will eliminate first um the worthy park i it's flipping delicious, but not as delicious as these. There's a there's something here that I'm on the Paloma stakes, rum Paloma, I'm going 10 out of 10. Okay. And I think that's how I'm going to benchmark it. There might be better. I'm not saying this is the absolute best. I've got 12 rums here compared to whatever I've got behind me. But styles of rum. There's a 10 out of 10 here for me personally. And that's the benchmark. So I'm giving the worthy on this like a seven. It's delicious but not kind of what I want from this drink. Now, bear in mind, Palomas, they do kind of use tequila. That's smashed, isn't it? Uh, tequila does use kind of um, uh, Blanco, Reposado, and Yeho. They all work, in, and Mezcal, in a Paloma. So we are going complete from one extreme to the other with that sort of Worthy Park dark rum. And I thought I'd better stop because there's electrics down there. But it did quite well. Look, it, it sort of fell like that. <laughs> so I didn't lose anything. There we go. Let's just pop that in there. There we go. Right. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm also going to get rid of the Smith & Cross. It's lovely. Two in my face. Way, way, way two in my face. Uh, so the Smith & Cross is not for me. What else am I going to eliminate here? Chairman's Reserve, the legacy. And this would be my sort of Appleton eight-year-old, the Angosturas, those kind of lines of rum as well, the Mount Gaze probably. This is kind of, although they're very tasty, and this is the profile that kind of represents them. Delicious, a step up from the Worthy Park. I forget what I just said for Worthy Park. If I'm going Worthy Park, let's just say seven for the Worthy Parks. Six. Let's go six. Six out of ten for the Worthy Park. Six out of ten for the Smith and Cross. Uh, that's a strong. That's a seven. That's a step up. The Chairman's Legacy. In there. So absolutely delicious. 
Where do we go now? I tell you what, the next one I'm actually going to eliminate, which is fascinating, is the Chairman's White as well. Delicious, a step up again, um, on an 8. 7.5, 8, my scoring's failed. I should have gone worthy part 5, should I? <laughs> Look, it's delicious. I would quite happily drink that all day. It's just better here, which is kind of fascinating. So now I'm going to focus down, I think this is right, I'm going to focus down here. Uh, the next one going is the Barbados. It's got a little bit of extra character with it. Right, this is how I'm going to have to do this. The Worthy, right, I have to think about this, sorry. The Worthy, five. Smith and Cross, five. Okay, five out of tens. And that, still nice. It sounds harsh giving it a five. It's still nice, but, you know, when we come up. This, the plantation kind of has to be around about the seven. So that makes the chairman... Um, about a six, if you know what I mean. That's 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 fair. That is delicious, the Barbados. Uh, sorry, that's the Gran Añejo. Sorry, the Barbados is up there. Wow. That is delicious. But I do prefer these two down here, the Zymaca and the Fiji. The Fiji gives it a little tropical twist. Cracking, absolutely cracking. Love that. That's a strong 8 out of 10. But the Zymaka... The Zymaka is almost where I want it to be. Almost. So the Zymaka is a 9 for me. So I'll keep that in uh, and we'll get rid of those two. But I mean, that, that is delicious. And those delicious for very different reasons. But I do want that sort of... I don't know what the word is. That kind of the characteristics from the rum to come in. Uh, with a Paloma. So, so let's come down this end. Now, uh, Kit's Ninefold, white rum. Delicious. Love it. Uh, pot still, up in Scotland. Uh, South Scotland. Kind of, uh, let's, let's go sort of near the, the uh, England border. Sort of Dumfries, dump, dump Galloway sort of area. That's delicious. The pot still vibe does come through. Really, really lovely in there. Very different pot still vibe to the Zymaca. Obviously, Scottish rum. Jamaican rum. So it's different. But that's where my head was for this. I'm thinking this is pot still. This is a pot still cocktail. So it's a question of whether these, you know, which one of these is going to take it. Now in my head, I'm thinking the Clarin. I, 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 I thought this cocktail was suited to Clarin all day long. It is. It's like an 8.5 on there. Delicious. Uh, the rum bar, comparing it to all these, an 8.5. You know, different vibes to the Zymaka. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. I tell you, you make a Paloma with any of these. Fantastic. With the Clement, again, I actually, prefer, I actually prefer the Agricol to the Clarin in this. I, and I was completely surprised by this. I thought the Clarin would take this, but that's a strong nine. This little bad boy. This is fantastic. Absolute clear cut 10 out of 10. That is just all shades of amazing. Uh, Jamaica and Martinique. This is the Boutique Signature Blend number two, uh, number one, sorry. This is fantastic. Hands down, my pick for the Paloma. But just to pick out on the, the Nifold, and people are going to kind of think, my membership community are going to go, yeah, yeah, you know, you go. we've been chatting, having chats. I'm basically going to do a lot more to pick up UK rum. There's some phenomenal UK rums up here. I promise you, this is the pot still vibes without it being Jamaican, what you'd classically sort of think is Jamaican pot still. And this is where this is so, this is really nice. It's really, really good. I might have to have a little tinker with that because that could be a, a great perfect serve. So if you want to see me dissect another rum cocktail and all this, pop into that video right there.